The single biggest issue with Texas Chainsaw right now is actually something they tried to address in their big patch, but I don't think it's working. I want to tell you what I've seen so far since that big patch, how it's actually killing the game, and I want to talk about Danny as well since I've been able to spend some more time with him and tell you what I think about him. If you like Texas Chainsaw content and other games that I review right here on the channel, consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, we've been talking about content and that being the biggest driver for people actually leaving now for a couple of months. But since launch, we've got the Nicotero Leatherface, we got our new map, we got Danny, we got Nancy, we got cosmetics. I think overall, the content that they've put into the game, considering the size of gun, is pretty freaking extraordinary, actually. And although I'd like to see this stuff quicker, just like everybody else, at the end of the day, I think they've done a good job with the content. Now, I may not agree with the pricing. Actually, I don't agree with all the pricing that they've done to this point. Yes, I feel like it's pretty expensive. But at the same time, lack of content is not killing this game. What is killing this game, though, is the load times, but not in the way it was before. I feel like we've kind of had this back and forth since launch. When the game first came out, family was super underpowered. Victims could basically troll and escape really quickly. I think at one point I was escaping upwards of 50 or 60% of the time. Since then, they balanced the scales and put more power with the killers, less with the victims, making it harder for them to escape. And honestly, I appreciate that because that's what a horror game should be. It should still be fun on both sides, but you should be afraid of the killers not, you know, teabagging them every 20 seconds because, you know, you can escape in 30 seconds. So that part of it, I feel like, is good. In their big patch, they did a couple of things to help with the speed of the pregame lobbies as well. One of the first things they did is they removed the requirement for Leatherface. Now, I have to say that this changed the dynamic of the game significantly. It's A, more quiet, it gives you some room to breathe when you start down in the basement, but one thing about it, man, is if you get a hitchhiker, a Nancy, and a cook in Family House, good luck getting out. Pretty much your only option at that point is going to be the fuse, um, because it is almost impossible to get out of the house. Now, of course, there's other ways to do it, but at the same time, it can be very difficult. But they did that so people don't have to play as Leatherface if you don't want to, to help speed up the pregame lobby. Now, when somebody unreadies, of course, it, you know, that will go away. And then when a fifth person readies back up in a full lobby, of course, then it'll go back to 30 seconds. That's helped to speed things up, too. Now, right before the Nicotero Leatherface came out, I'd say about two weeks before, I started playing Leatherface a lot. And that's pretty much all I played up until, you know, just this recent patch. Now, Mrs. Hexshot would be playing victim. But one thing that we've noticed, especially since I started playing Danny and trying to figure him out, is the waiting times for victims is insanely long. Interestingly, though, when I play during the day, there's less players. Typically, I will get into a match within a minute to a minute and a half. When I play at nighttime, when there's more people on as a victim, it took me 28 minutes the other day to get into one match. It's taken me 25 minutes to get into a match, 20 minutes to get into a match. I feel like the average time to get into a match right now is excessively long. Now, it's not like that every single match, and I don't want to try to, you know, pass this off as average wait times being, you know, 20 to 25 minutes, but it still is a problem. I mean, you got to think most people work during the day, they come home, turn on the game, they want to get into a match and have some fun and, you know, kind of, you know, just relax. And that's what gaming is really about. But this is a bad look for the Texas Chainsaw. Now, another interesting thing is when I play as family, no matter the time of day, 15 to 30 seconds, I'm in there. Now, at nighttime, when I'm trying to get into a match and it's taking so long, it's not like I'm in these lobbies by myself. Typically, I'll have three out of four victims two out of three family members. This could be a couple things. Maybe, you know, there's a lot more people that are playing in duos or playing in quads. Could be the fact that there's so many people trying to play victim now and a lot less people trying to play family. Now, maybe if you're playing again with a full squad, maybe you're being able to get into matches super quickly. I'd love to hear that from y'all down below. 
But I can tell you, as of right now, this has not been a very good experience, especially at nighttime, over the past week and a half to two weeks. So I've kind of been following the, I guess, best way to get into matches since the beginning, because when the game first came out, I played a lot of Victim, mainly Victim. But about halfway through, I switched to Family, and I was able to get in super quickly. And now that I'm trying to play as Victim a lot more and, you know, figure Danny out and get him leveled up and all that stuff... It's just super slow, especially at nighttime. So, you know, there's obviously still players in the game. There's obviously still enough to fill servers. It's not like the game is dead, but at the same time, if enough people have this issue, it will kill it off quicker than any lack of content or any other bugs and things that may be in the game. Now, one thing I want to talk about too is Danny worth buying. So now that I've had some time to spend with him, let me tell you, Danny is a serious problem. And the higher you level him up, the more of a problem he becomes. Now, you don't have to inspect items in the basement or anywhere in the map, but it's going to make it much easier to tamper with exits if you do. Now, little objects like your lock boxes and lamps, those will give you a little bit of credit towards filling that ability bar. But the more you can fill it, the better it's going to be for you in the end. Now, if you do something like the generator or the valve, the fuse box, it's going to give you more credit towards filling that ability bar. So let's take the valve exit. You grab the handle, you get to the valve, you attach it like you normally would. At this point, if you have enough time, you can inspect that too if you want to. It'll give you a little bit more credit. And then you hit tamper. Now, if you haven't filled that bar up, that ability bar, a lot, then it's going to take you a pretty long time to be able to tamper with that exit. If you have filled that bar up a significant amount, you hit the tamper button and or use your knowledge button and it's going to go through this process really quickly. And you don't have to turn it on. It's going to automatically turn it on for you once you have that bar filled up. And so it is a powerful tool. Not only that, the family can't touch that exit. It's open, right? They can't close it. And so it makes for a pretty awesome tool. Imagine using this on a basement exit, the valve exit. Again, this is uh this is something that if you have enough time and you play kind of stealthy and you and you definitely take your time with him, he is definitely worth buying. Almost uh almost pay to win type of uh vibes I'm getting from him. He's that powerful. So again, give him a try if you haven't already. I, I think he's a really awesome character. And again, He's kind of toeing the line between pay to win, but definitely a uh, definitely a powerful tool that Danny has. So I really like his ability. I talked about Nancy in a video a, a couple of days ago. So if you want to check that out, I'll make sure to leave a link to that. But that's where I'm at right now, man. I think this is going to kill the Texas Chainsaw Massacre before anything else. I'd love to hear your opinion. Are you having the same issue? Let me know what you guys think down below. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. See you on the next one. And as always, hold them down.